23rd of March 2020. Sergey Baklikov, welcome back to my video blog. Recently, because of coronavirus in St. Petersburg, school spring holidays, which is going to be just for seven days from 23rd to 30th of March, they were extended to at least 12th of April. And uh, this has affected my daughter, Victoria, who study in St. Petersburg school. And you know, just a short spring holidays at school turned to be like, turned to kind of long vacations. And uh, for this reason, together with my family, all of my family, I decided just uh, for this time to come to my motherland and welcome. This is Ufa, my hometown. I know many of you guys missed this city. And uh, my first video from here is going to start from the central streets of the historical city center. Now, let's see how is the things here. Not in Moscow, not in St. Petersburg, but uh, in a deeper city of Russia, because uh, Ufa, it's uh, the capital of the Republic of Bashkortostan, and it's uh, deeper in Urals. This is the beginning of Lenin, Vladimir Lenin Street. And it starts with this, the House of Specialists, constructed in 1930s. A kind of significant building for those days. And uh, also it starts with this pedestrian underpass. Let's go. This is a typical Soviet underpass, which was built in the Soviet days. And it looks pretty original. Many of such an underpasses now have inside the commercial points, like kiosks, where they sell newspapers or maybe a bakery and stuff like that. But here it looks almost exactly the same as it was from the very beginning, because uh, 50 meters from here, here is the house, Parliament House, and uh, they never let the commercial points to be here. The House of Specialists. And here at the very beginning of Vladimir Lenin Street starts with this pedestrian site. It's an alley which is now called Art Theria. This is an alley of uh, so-called contemporary sculpture sculptures the sculptures like this made by many different uh, artists from many different countries all the way through for about like maybe 200 meters This is an alley of uh, Bashkortostan Medical University, which is there. It's one of kind of strong medical universities in Russia. They prepare many specialists of uh, medicine. Look. Still enough of snow in Ufa, but look at that tractor. The guys are cleaning this. Well, first off, they are trying to clean uh, the walkways and the roads, but the edges, in the edges still, still the snow. Well, finally, I've got to see the snow. This year, I almost never saw uh, the snow in St. Petersburg. In most of universities in Russia, you have to study for five years. But in medical university, 
the education usually goes for six years. Well, it makes sense because it's very important profession. So the sculptures like this. Once uh, Lenin Street is located in the historical city center of Ufa, we can see many buildings like this which is definitely a great example of the architecture of 19th century. Another sculpture. That is Ufa written in Bashkir language. Here are two languages in the Republic of Bashkirtostan, two official languages, Russian and a Bashkir language. Now I've got to the crossroads of Alexander Pushkin and uh, Vladimir Lenin streets. Now this is the theater of opera and ballet of the Republic of Bashkortostan of Russia. And that's where its way began Rudolf Nureyev. This is one of the most famous ballet dancers in the whole world. He was an absolute superstar of 1960s, 1970s. Oh, hi! Hi! That's Yelena, Yelena Aryavnova. She's my good friend. Yeah, yeah. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Well, we now I'm telling that so this is where it's uh, weight started, Rudolf Nureyev. Yes, and Shalapin. Uh, Fyodor Shalapin, yeah. Uh, this is uh, one of the most famous Russian museums of Rudolf Nureyev. Is here. Mm -hmm. uh, several years ago here was coming the crew of uh, BBC, BBC Channel, uh, together with an actor, Ray Fiennes, who was uh, uh, Volum de Mort in Harry Potter, yeah. you know, he was here actually, and he was hanging out in cafe around. It's so nice to get back uh, to uh, to get back to Ufa and uh, meeting people, meeting an old friends. <laughs> Two days ago, I went through Nevsky Prospect of Saint Petersburg, and there was lots of people, almost all people without masks and seems the same here. Well, people here care even less about coronavirus because it's uh, way deeper from Moscow and St. Petersburg where most of tourists are coming. Even those, the city of Ufa is one of the biggest cities of Russia with a population of 1.2 million residents. Well, still, it's not very touristy city, especially if talk about foreign tourists. This is Holiday Inn Hotel which was built just five years ago for BRICS summit. BRICS, it's Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. Actually, I've been to that summit, if you remember. 
and I've been to the press conference of Putin and the video was called uh, Summit of BRICS 2015 with President of Russia Vladimir Putin and then uh, like some people thought this is definitely a clickbait but it wasn't the fountain seven girls not working yet too early Now this building used to be the store in the Soviet times which was called Children's World, Getsky Mir and now here is McDonald's It used to be one of the first McDonald's in the city of Ufa So one of the oldest McDonald's uh, branches so far Let's go through McDonald's, see how many people there are. It's two floors McDonald's. Well, many people as always. The restaurants are not closed in Ufa as well. In the summertime, many people are sitting here. Also, they have such an umbrellas. the police department look two weeks ago I filmed the video that here was so-called black star burger and also black star where uh, launched by a golden boy rap artist and businessman Timothy Timothy there's a 35 years old guy he is the same age as me but he's also like very popular around youth and uh, I filmed the video about his burger place Black Star Burger because his label called Black Star everything is about Black Star and uh, really he had burgers which are much better than McDonald's burgers because it's more like craft, crafty, natural but when you're located in between of McDonald's and a KFC there you really it's it's really hard for you to compete with the prices and even those most people like I think understand that uh, Black Star burgers much better but they can't for this reason they can't put a uh, lower price and it was closed now this is an area before the guest yards guest in the door Look, Gastin the Dvor. It's a very historical building. It's like in St. Petersburg, but just some smaller, well, still big enough. And uh, also known as Trading Rose. It's actually like the supermarket of the uh, end of 19th century. And uh, what I hate about it is that recently it all have the advertisements like you see I mean the captions there they don't have to do this they don't this do this in Moscow they don't do this with Gastin Nedvor in St. Petersburg but they make it here you know okay so there's like a private owners of this place now inside 
and they're like can make everything what they want inside but normally there have to be the law that you don't have to change the facades which is the historical facade they said that they can make it for camera okay Oh, well, let's see. Well done. Well done. Here is the board where we can see how many hours left until uh, 75 years anniversary of the uh, Victory Day in the World War II, which is in Russia we call Great Patriotic War. 46 days until 75th anniversary or 1114 hours 53 minutes. Like four years ago, I filmed uh, Chad House, which is owned by an American, uh, Craig P. Gay from Portland. He relocated uh, from, from Portland to Ufa. And it seems like he's still here. And that's pretty great. I'm really great to see that he's still here. His businesses keep going. More than that, he already have like several locations of his coffee shops, which he called Chat House. In Ufa, most of traffic lights also have the final countdowns. You can see for sure how many seconds left until the change of the light. This is the bookstore which is called Znanie, Knowledge. It's, uh, I think, the most significant bookstore in Ufa. And it works. Well, first of all, this is the historical building and look, I like that second level, like the galleries there, pretty great, pretty great. And by the way, when I was coming here in 2004 and I was not married yet, uh, many times I was noticing there's so many girls, beautiful girls, smart girls, and I have found that this bookstore is a pretty great place if you want to chase like a really normal girl not a slut not a whore but just a good lady this is a uh, buses which is so called like root taxi they are commercial root taxis uh, this is the bus the brand named Buzz Pazik well many more contemporary now but these are really old, but they still work. Uh, MTS, Megaphone and Beeline. This is three of the biggest uh, mobile operators in Russia and they are all together here and they all are works no quarantine in uh, mobile operator offices as well The memorial of architecture of 20th century yes this is another great building in a style of like a brutal functionalism That 19th century building 
there is now the Ministry of Internal Affairs, actually like the Ministry of Police. And this is the main post office of Ufa. Main post office. Which is already like 1930s architecture. Well, funny fact that this is an intersection of communistic, communi and there's right next to the door, there's zero kilometer point. Like this is uh, zero point of Ufa. Let me show you. Zero kilometer of uh, the car roads. It looks almost same as in Moscow next to Red Square. I know one, one nice beer bar here. Let's see if it works. The bar with a lot of craft beer from like small breweries. The monument to Vladimir Lenin. Now I'm going up the communistic street. Sinebrukov. Айвара нету? Понял. Я тоже могу налить. Окей, ладно. I love such a places where you can find lots of different beers, which you normally never will find just in an ordinary, in an ordinary uh, grocery stores of Russia. You see how many different kinds of beer here if you want a IPA okay you want a lager you want a porter you want a stout everything is here as from Russian breweries as from German uh, British Irish always nice music Besides a huge choice of bottle beer, there's like at least 35 different kinds of beer on tap on a crane. Look. This is for the first time I hear uh, about stout, which is like stouts with the uh, flavor of um, of an orange and chocolate mm. kind of interesting you yeah? know besides beer here is a pretty quality snack and burger also steak I see they have steak made of beef and fish. 
You know, the stout with the flavor of orange and uh, chocolate is a little bit more than I expected. I expected it, to, it, to, it will be something like ridiculous, you know, ridiculous, because look, where is the beer and where is the freaking orange? But it turns to be good, real good. Ugh. Most of beers here just from uh, 250 to 350 dollars, if talking dollars. But, like, of course you pay in rubles, but I say in dollars for you to understand more. Спасибо. So the place was called Senyobrukhov. It's Blue Belly, but it's written like this is the last name in Russian manner. In the Western manner, it would be uh, like Blue Bellison. I got back to Lenin Street again. And continue walking. Now this is the building of uh, Bash Inform Svyaz, Bash Kurdistan Informational Connection. It's a state organization and uh, they used to own all the landline phones in the Republic of Bash Kurdistan. But now most of people in Ufa they cancel the landline phones they don't want to pay for this but they also provide an internet but there was the time when they were not thinking too much about an internet and that's how they actually lost the most of market to ufanet ufanet this is a private uh, internet provider But I guess they are still big. And now this is an Art Quadrat, Art Quadro. This is a public space of Ufa, one of the most significant projects of the city, for sure. This is also a uh, private project. The guy who managed this all, he became rich on an oil trading. And after he satisfied all of his basic needs and then all of his dreams, he decided to make something, something real significant in his life for his city. So he bought all of this land, the whole block. That's why it is called Quadrat. Really, it's like a quadro, all this territory. And this is like uh, some kind of hipsters uh, art space for a youth. It's still under process of construction. Actually, the construction goes already like for the third year, little by little. The place is completely inspired by the places like Sev Kabel, Northern Cable and St. Petersburg or Flacon in Moscow. Creative art space. Cafe. Pizzeria. Place to hang out for the youth. And everything is made in a style of loft. Ready to cars. And this block here was some really old houses. They decided to leave it and restaurate.
that's good they decided just to restore these buildings they uh, give an additional charm to this place in the same time here in front uh, this is not the best example of how they saved the historical heritage you see the new mall and that's the facade of the historical building that was here Now from another side of Art Quadro, we are getting back to Lenin Street again. And look, the snow is started. Not too much, but it is. Damn, I was missing the snow. Getting back to Lenin Street. This is the movie theater built in 1953 in a style of Stalin's Empire in the summertime 2019 if you remember I have filmed the whole video about ju just this movie theater let's check out if movie theaters are still walking Wow, I always love the Soviet doors. Okay, it's closed because of frigging coronavirus infection. Oh well. Look at this colonnade. Awesome, just awesome. And that brutal building is the building of FSB, which is a former KGB. And this is a typical Stalinist residential building. Stalinist because that was built in 1950, 50s. Still now, these residential buildings and apartments in them considered as uh, pretty good and expensive because here is a pretty thick walls uh, so it's a very good soundproof and uh, so-called tall ceilings I mean the distance between floor and ceiling is like 3.5 meters also just a pretty good, good good-looking building with an art fretworks say so look at this balconies was Russian car, I would say even Soviet car. And now this is a very significant place for me, which is a state concert hall called Bushkirtastan. That's the concert hall for the National Symphony Orchestra of the Republic of Bashkortostan of Russia. This is the main orchestra, uh, full featured symphonic orchestra of the Republic of Bashkortostan. Another monumental building built in 1930s. This is the Hotel Bashkiria. Bashkiria, that's one of the versions to say 
uh, Bashkortostan. Bashkortostan is like an official uh, Bashkiri. It's just simple form of uh, Bashkortostan. Brutal constructivism. And that's the Academy of Science. I will now get there closer so you to see the uh, Soviet mosaics. Here it is. The Academy of Science of the Republic of Bashkortostan. Another Soviet building with this mosaics awesome awesome work now getting back to our grandfather vladimir lenin streets again kumpan mikhail kumpan coffee and wine bar the new the new coffee shop of mikhail kumpan an old friend of mine. By the way, the best coffee in Ufa. Trust you. And it's nowhere, yeah. Ну, кофе, кофе лапки. Здесь будете? Вот здесь, здесь. In the meantime, we continue walking Lenin streets. This is the theater of youth, which is also closed. Now it's the snow with the rain, such a rainy snow. The weather changed so much. Usually it's not typical for Ufa, it's more typical for St. Petersburg, which is next to the sea. And it's normal there. But usually it's not typical for Ufa, for the weather to be changed so fast. Such a birch alley right in the middle of Lenin Street. Especially beautiful in the summertime when all the leaves are coming out. And look, this is a pretty historical uh, building, residential building for the history of Ufa. It used to be the very first nine floor building in Ufa. And on the first floor, there was the store which was called Hrustal, Crystal. They used to sell uh, crystal furniture there. Then for a very, very long time here was the firm store of an Italian clothes brand, United Colors of Benetton here. Now here is a gastronomic store, like a grocery store, but uh, many older people still call it Hrustal. I remember it in 2004, even though I was very young, only 20 years old, but I had a high-paid job. I was a music director on a local FM radio station, and I remember how I was uh, I was buying the uh, clothes here in the colors of Benetton, and here in Ufa back then it was really like fashionable. 
And that's another historical building, the head office of uh, Ural Sib, Ural Siberian Bank. For a very long time, it was the uh, tallest building, the tallest building in Ufa, and in the Republic of Bashkortostan, of course. Uh, and it seems like the taller building, they are constructed not that long ago. The uh, trams, trams of Ufa. Aviation College. Here they prepared the specialists for the aviation industry. That is already a more simple so-called Khrushchev residential buildings, Khrushchevki. Nikita Khrushchev came to the authority of Soviet Union right after the death of uh, Joseph Stalin in 1953. Sha Shaurma place. You know, everywhere in Russia, Shaurma, called Shaurma, but in St. Petersburg, this is Shawarma. So, Nikita Khrushchev came to the authority after Stalin's death in 1953. And uh, his decree was uh, con to construct, to start constructing way more simpler buildings. Way simpler and way cheaper than uh, those Stalinist buildings. Because he thought that uh, this way they will be able to increase the volume of a construction and provides way more people in a short period of time with the uh, with the new apartments but now look they started to decorate the facades of many Khrushchev buildings with just uh, such uh, ceramic and granite tiles so they don't look uh, original. The entrance to Yakutov Park, park of uh, leisure named after Ivan Yakutov, with the entrance again made in 1950s style with all of that fret work, you know. The historical fire department. Look, there's the watchtower. When the city was old, it was like really high, high point. And you could see the whole city through this. And if there's the fire. Now here is still the fire department. The historical part is saved. And now, this is a relatively new arena, Ufa Arena, for the hockey club Salavat Your Life, which is the professional hockey club, uh, the home club of Ufa for uh, Continental Hockey League, KHL. This is like NHL in North America. KHL is the highest hockey league in Russia. And now uh, the playoffs of KHL temporarily suspended during the freaking coronavirus. I hate it. I hate it. Okay, dudes, the weather began really suck. The snowflakes are getting to the lens, and uh, it's better to go home now. Anyway, it seems like I've got the picture. I went through like almost whole uh, Lenin streets and what I can say, well, mostly everything is quiet here. 
uh, many people in the streets, many cars, only a few people I saw with the masks. But in the same time, people prefer now not to spend the money in uh, places like cafe and restaurants because people are like not sure how long it will take and uh, how worse it will go. The state companies are closed. I mean, those one which is require a big public like uh, theaters and movie theaters, stuff like that. Uh, but commercials, commercials, commercial companies keep working like bars, uh, cafe, restaurants and trying to make at least something. Well, hope you enjoyed this video. Anyway, this uh, come back to the hometown of Ufa. Comments, like, subscribe. See you.